Ash Mack here. I got a very special guest with me, Ryan Henry from Black Ink Chicago. How are you? Morning, morning. How you doing? Good. Now, first things first, no, really, like, how are you? Because we've all been through a pandemic. The world shut down. It's re kind of opening right now. And, and that's what we're seeing in this new season of Black Ink Chicago. So how has this been for you and your family this whole time in the shop? Uh, you know, I feel like um, what, uh, what we've gone through uh, has been something that, you know, uh, fortunately has been similar to the rest of the world, you know, so... Uh, in the in the sense of where you know some people think that people that they've been in tune with, the people that they admire, uh, even in success, that uh, that they haven't gone through it. You know, us coming into this new season, you know, we'll be showing how we we went through it. Also, you know, we had to shut down and we suffered, and you know, now we're coming up out of it, and you know, people get to see the real of it. Right. Now, what were some challenges you feel like you might have been going through with this? Because I really feel like going into 2019, into 2020, everything was about to really pop off. Then the world stopped and it was like God just pulled the rug from everybody. It was like, hold on, wait, you got to do some work real quick on yourself. <laughs> yeah, we, we all I think we all kind of felt like, yeah, man, it's about to be our year. We're about to do this, about to be the best year. And that sit down um, and allow for everybody uh, forcefully to you know, start taking a look at the things that they thought they were going to do and then, you know, the things that was in between what was going to happen, you know what I mean? So for me, you know, it was more like, hey, man, you can, you know, for me, I, I was putting everything in the works. I was working my hardest, but I wasn't dealing with certain things on the outside um, or, or internally uh, more so and then having to sit down and then focus on those and be forced to deal with them. Right. You know, uh, it, 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 forced, it forced us to, to have to deal with those types of things. And in doing that, you know what I mean, a lot of things happen, uh, good and bad, you know what I mean, some less favorable, and then you got to, you know, you got you to gotta take that at face value. Right. So what does that look like for this upcoming season when it comes to you individually and collectively with doing that inner work and inner healing with NIMAG? Well, I mean, for me, you know, it uh, it allowed for me to uh, have to basically, you know, put all my stuff on the table because, like I said, when you're forced to, to deal with, you know, the things that you're not dealing with, you know, it'll end up, you know, juggling to you and blow up in your face, you know what right. I mean? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I was one of the people who did that. Uh, but then moving forward, you know what I mean, it allowed for me to start seeing how I wanted to correct things and how I wanted to, you know, be better at some of the things that I wasn't, you know what I mean, and being forced to deal with them, you know what I mean? So me and therapy and, you know, um, learning how to be, you know, uh, a different type of man that was more honest about more things that I, that I didn't take it serious. So what do you think has been your biggest lesson so far and that we're going to see on this upcoming season? Um, I feel like um, in, a, in a nutshell, um, people are going to be able to see me uh, finally, you know, putting uh, myself first, which over the last, you know, six seasons, you know, I hadn't done. And it's, you know, it's bit me in the back, you know, many a times, but, and, you know, in, in failure and in doing that, you know, I've learned to want to be able to put myself first uh, because it allows for me to be a better leader, a better friend, a better boss, you know, uh, just a better person overall. Right. And, you know, sometimes within the last six seasons, we've seen all different types of versions of, of Ryan. We've seen a friend. We've seen a brother. We've seen a lover. We've seen a villain. You know, which which version of Ryan are we really going to get this season? Man, I, everything you just named <laughs> is what you're going to get. But just, you know, at a, at a a more open version, you know what I mean, a, a more mature, more adult version, you know, of um Somebody that was all of those things, you know what I mean? But to me, it was uh, it was a version that I wasn't my complete, honest self, you know what right. I mean? And then doing that, you know what I'm saying, being shut down and having to learn and, you know, dealing with the hardships that we put ourselves in, you know, it allowed for me to have to look at things and then be like, you know what, all right, let me start being real with me first. And then, you know, you just right. you end up getting a different mood. Right. Okay. So since you mentioned honesty, let, let's talk about being honest a little bit. Now, we talk about health and wellness, right? A lot of people have been real honest about the fact of bathing is an option. When it comes to your health and wellness, is that an option for you? Like, what does that look like and self-care look like for you? Yeah, I don't know why that's never not been an option. You know what I mean? That's just, <laughs> for me, that's something that I just don't get. <laughs> you know, that it's not, you know what I mean? I don't, uh, you know. I think I always came into the realm of, you know, being like, you know, as long as you stay clean and smelling good, somebody will like you, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know who would, who would put being clean 
uh, cleanliness on the back burner, and then allow for them to have personality more than they smell or more than they, you know, more than they feel clean. So, you know, Big I'm a tea shower. Tea shower. Okay, now when it comes to um, more healing in this season, does healing also include patching up some previous relationships and friendships? Like, what are we going to see? Uh, you know what? It, it would seem as if um, as if healing allows for uh, forgiveness to always be in, in the realm of, you know, fixing things. But mm-hmm. I think healing also allows for to be able to, you know, forgive and, and let go and forget some things. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's not always about holding on, you know, when you're talking about healing. You know, healing means like, hey, man, I'm accepting that I'm not going to accept these things anymore, you know. And in doing that, you know, you move yourself or you, you know, you might deal yourself out of some situations that aren't the best. You know what I mean? It's not always about having to fix certain things, you know, and always going back to certain things. It's like, you know what, I'm going to finally move on to certain things that wasn't good. Now, when you're speaking of moving on, right, are we also going to see more of an expansion from Nine Mag? Like, are you going to hit new cities? Like, wh- how are we going to see this within this new season or just years to come? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, these were these are some of the things, uh, like I said, that I've come into and in learning business and, you know, trying to, uh, trying to grow and expand in certain things. And uh, you'll, you'll see my journey of uh, trying to do that. But, I mean, it's always wrenches that get thrown in. So, you know, sometimes you might have to take a step back and what your plans might be to handle, you know, more of things how you want, just like how we thought we were coming into 2020. Right. And, then, you know, got to let that down. So. Would you have any business adventures outside of tattooing, though? You see your pictures of your hair, skincare, all of that, or physical fitness. Like, would you ever go into the business of those things? No, absolutely. You know, uh, like I said, as, you know, as we get older and as, as things grow, you know what I mean? I'm, uh, you know, I won't be tattooing forever. You know what I mean? I'm already on the path to start retiring because of, you know, I've been blessed to be able to uh, create lanes and jobs for uh, more lanes of uh, passive income that take me out of having to be the physical service provider of tattooing continually. I've done that to build the brands, and then for me, it's you know, it allows for me to uh, grow other people. And doing that, you find other ways to, other ways to promote yourself other ways to uh continue business you know uh, some people would think that hey, you see people you know have to rihanna for an album year after year after year but you know what i mean she figured out ways to be able to support and you know supply the people with something that she cares about and she might not never make an album again and just because y'all want something from her don't mean that that's what she's gonna go back to doing so so with you saying that, is Black Ink Chicago coming to an end? Are we going to see another season? No, absolutely. absolutely. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm, my blessing in, uh, in what I've done is allowed for me to, you know, um, be the person who will work 24 hours around the clock tattooing. And that's allowed for me to grow into a larger shop and, you know, being able to expand now and open up in, in many different cities mm-hmm. and create jobs for other upcoming artists, you know, artists who are younger and more hungry and you know uh it's allowed for me to start taking some steps back so sometimes being at the top as a leader isn't always uh, you know it's not it's not as it's not always bad that i'm not on the front line anymore you know what i mean i always right. spend my time being on the front line as a leader you know saying let's pull as opposed to standing at the top and saying hey go do that you know what i mean but yeah. you know sometimes you, you get to a level of where you you know that leadership can you know remove you from the front line, and you know, it, it does make you a, an elite, but it doesn't take you away from being a leader uh, in how you do it. Right. Okay, well, we're looking forward to this new season of Black Ink Chicago. And you know what? We've been seeing a lot of versus battles during COVID times, right? But would you ever think about doing, like, a, a tattoo versus battle? Like, who would you want to go against? Or is there a shop? And would you ever do one against Black Ink New York? Yeah, I mean, if they if they ever wanted that smoke, you know what I'm saying, we can make it happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it, it's been one unbeknownst to them the entire time, or even to us, you know what I mean? So it's just luckily we had that uh, we had that friendship rivalry until it you know until it stopped, and you know what I mean, whoever wants the smoke, they can get it. Hey, well, you know what? That might be a, an additional bonus episode right there. Now I need VH1 to cut me a check for putting that idea together. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, I appreciate your time today. And of course, when will the new season of Black Ink Chicago be airing? Uh, new season is uh, Monday, October 4th, you know, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on VH1. See y'all there. You know, back at it again, season seven.
Facts. And where can everyone find you at? Social media and all. Yeah, everything for me is uh, is uh, Ryan Henry Tattoo and uh, Nine Mag Tattoo. So uh, that, that was Instagram, Twitter, you know, websites, all the same. Ryan, I appreciate your time for today. And before you go, I had to tell you, my mom said, tell Ryan he is so handsome. Like, okay, mom, I'll tell him for you. <laughs> That's all I said. Thank you. <laughs> will do. Will do. All right. Have a great day. All right. All right. Appreciate it. You too.